<clears throat> okay, so I'm going to bring up now an important special case. So let's say that the only force acting on you is gravity. Okay, <clears throat> well, if this is the case and we're not standing at the surface of the earth, in which we'll get to in a second, then what is your acceleration? So what is A equal to? Well, we can do a net force equation. So mass times acceleration is equal to the sum of the forces. In this case, it's just the gravitational force, with it, which is GMM over R squared. We use capital M for the mass of whatever object is being is pulling. Okay. Well, given this, this mass and that mass are the same, and we can divide them out, which means that the acceleration you experience from gravity is equal to GM over r squared okay g is constant if you know the mass of something and how far away you are from it then you can find your acceleration of gravity okay now at the surface of the earth the mass of the earth doesn't change regardless of how far you are away from the earth this is relatively constant too and so we say that all three of these things are constant for anyone near the surface of the Earth, and that's where we get 9.8 for gravitational acceleration. Um, now, this number is not exactly 9.8, and it varies quite a bit. So we use g. We say it's 9.8. Okay, let's let me clarify. The acceleration that you should experience from gravity is based on these things what you actually experience is slightly different based on where you are on earth and where the um, how far you are away from earth's surface maybe there's like in a certain area of the earth it's a little bit more dense and so being close to there you have a stronger gravitational pull and so stronger gravitational acceleration and so the value of acceleration from gravity changes um, but G is going to be kind of different because um, what we experience and what we predict are different. In addition, because the Earth is spinning, there's a small effect from that too. We've talked about that effect before. It's very, very tiny, but it does exist. Okay? And so there's a lot of variation in acceleration from gravity depending on where you are on Earth. On Earth. And so you're at the top of a mountain or something. And you can see a table on page 335 in your book that shows the value for acceleration of gravity at some different places on Earth. Okay, so but in general, if you want to know the acceleration from gravity on something, you would <clears throat> set up a net force equation and you can just divide out m to get a. So now that we've done this, if Earth's radius is equal to um, let's see I lost it. I had it so if Earth's radius is equal to 6.37 times 10 to the 20 sorry times 10 to the 6 meters and Earth's mass so Earth's mass is 5.98 times 10 to the 24th kilogram plug these values in and go ahead and find what acceleration from gravity is okay okay and so I got about 9.8 I guess you could go to 3 0 if you want to I mean there's a lot of place values here and technically given the precision well we don't have a lot of precision on the radius there so probably we could stop at just 9.83 okay and this would be meters per second squared okay and we use 9.81 and we were mentioning some of the reasons for this a minute ago depending on where you are on earth and the effects of the rotation and the effects of the fact that Earth is not perfectly spherical. That's how we use this, but they're very close. Okay, so we can also use this to find out 
um, maybe how fast, if something has a circular orbit, like how fast it's orbiting, okay? Because if the only force acting on something is gravity, okay, so that ma equals g mm over r squared, and that a is equal to just gm over r squared, well, for something that has a circular motion, so something rotating, that A is going to be equal to V squared over R. Okay, so that V squared over R is equal to capital G, capital M, over R squared. Okay, so what that means is that the velocity for an object with a circular orbit is going to be equal to the square root of G times m over r. Okay, and now this only works though for something with a circular orbit, okay? And a lot of things have have um, elliptical orbits, but so for like satellites and stuff, they have orbits that are approximately circular, okay? And so we can use this to kind of talk about like the orbital velocity, how fast something has to be moving to be orbiting at a certain distance. And we'll get more into that later. Another in interesting conversation comes up with acceleration from gravity has to do with the difference in acceleration between, like if you're standing on Earth, because that you have height okay then the distance from the earth center between your feet and your head is different which means that you have a different acceleration from gravity between your feet and between your head now if you want to calculate that difference it'd be very difficult because you'd basically be subtracting gm over r squared minus gm over r plus h squared Okay, and yeah, this is going to just be really tricky because H is super, super, super small. Okay, but hopefully you're starting to notice something. Um, maybe you've seen something like this in calculus. <clears throat> and so what you can do, if you're looking for small variations in R, you take the derivative of this with respect to R. Okay, so dA dr is going to be equal to negative 2 times g m over r cubed, okay? And so the a, or the change in acceleration, is equal to negative 2 gm over r cubed dr. And so let's say that somebody has a height of 1.7 meters, then we would use this for dr. And then the mass of the earth is um, 5.98 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. The radius of the Earth at the Earth's surface is about 6.37 times 10 to the 6th meters. Okay, and so the question I have is what difference in acceleration does this, this person experience between their feet and their head? Okay, so go ahead and do that calculation real quick. Punch in those values. And so I get a change of about negative 5.25 times 10 to the negative 6 meters per second squared. And so what that means is they experience this much less gravitational acceleration or a person standing on Earth experiences this much less acceleration from gravity at their head than they do at their feet. All right? So let's say now, though, that instead of standing on Earth's surface, you're orbiting that same distance outside of a black hole, okay? And this black hole, instead of having the mass of the Earth, let's say that the black hole's mass was equal to 1.99 times 10 to the 31st kilograms. Okay, given this, 
I want to know what acceleration from gravity would be in that case. Let's use the same value for r, okay, and the same value for dr, and find what dA is going to be equal to. So not the acceleration, but the difference. Okay, so go ahead and find dA, given you're floating outside of this black hole, or being sucked into it. Okay, so what I found is that you have a difference of about 17.5 meters per second squared of acceleration between your feet and your head as you're getting pulled into the black hole. Okay, so this is not, I mean, this means that your feet are being pulled faster than your head. Okay, and so... Um, the process of getting pulled into a black hole is called spaghettification, and the reason why is because this is what happens. Okay, 17.5 is almost two times uh, acceleration from gravity of difference, okay, which means that there's quite a bit of difference in the amount of pull on your feet versus the amount of pull on your head as you're approaching this black hole, and so you literally just get like stretched until you don't exist anymore is what would happen if you were to fall into a black hole. Okay, you'd just stretch and stretch and stretch until you'd be gone. All right?